Okay, hello everybody and welcome back to this final workshop in our Teachers, Technicians and Advisors series. Uh, my name's Tom, I'm part of the recruitment team here at NUA and I'm just going to do a few little bits of kind of housekeeping before I hand over to um, Laura from the NEAT group and then we're going to get back into the workshop shortly after that. So um, initially, Thank you to all of you who have been posting your, your work that you produced in the last workshop with us. I'm going to just put this kind of um, some images that, that we, we particularly like that we put together. Uh, that's just going to be playing up on screen now. Um, now this is the second Sculpture Matters uh, workshop. Thank you very much if you were able to take part in the first one. Um, basically, Sculpture Matters was born about a year ago uh, through a conversation that Des and I had around 3D making and the lack of 3D making that we often see in portfolios nowadays. It often feels like it's, it's harder for schools to be able to make in 3D and to be able to teach their students in 3D. And there's so many things that we can learn through 3D making, whether it's about visual literacy, spatial awareness, composition, dexterity, and the ability to convert 2D concepts into 3D ideas. So that's something that we really wanted to address through um, a massive um, kind of plan that we've developed, where we go out into schools and colleges across the country, we collaborate with galleries like uh, the uh, Yorkshire Sculpture Park, and we look at ways that we can kind of reintroduce 3D making and showing sculpture as a way that um, a tool that people can understand how that applies to things like architecture and interior design, how it crosses over with fashion and even textiles. So it's got so much diversity to it and that's something that we really want to celebrate through the Sculpture Matters series. Now um, just a few things to mention before we get into to the workshop. Um, Initially, actually, I'd like to thank Liv, uh, my colleague Olivia, uh, for arranging so many of these workshops, or all of the workshops that have taken part as part of the Teachers, Technicians and Advisors series. She's really done a fantastic job um, setting up all of the workshops and presentations and um, also kind of being that go-between between, between the university and between you guys. So thank you so much, Liv, for just doing an amazing job. Um, right. So um, where are we? Right, housekeeping. In terms of how this is going to work today, you are very welcome to keep your camera on, but we would appreciate if you keep your audio off. Um, during certain parts of the workshop, uh, Des is going to invite um, certain um, members of, of, of the, well, certain participants to just have a little um, kind of conversation around what you've been making at various intervals during the workshop. So um, Des will um, be flicking through the videos and inviting you. Actually, it might help um, for, for a lot of you if you just keep a Des's video pinned to make sure that you're not seeing lots and lots of other people's um, screens all at one time. Um, other than that, um, this will be recorded. And in the unlikely event that Des's internet drops out, we will try for about five minutes to get him back into the workshop before um, abandoning the meeting. If we do have to abandon the meeting, we'll make a recording and we'll send it out to you. Um, in, in the event that we need to. Um, other than that, we are very aware that the, the COVID situation has affected so many people in lots of different ways. So various ways that we want to support you at this time is, is basically we, we've got our, our response to COVID on our website. Liv's going to be putting that onto the chat function. Um, and if you want to find out about how this is affecting our students and how we are trying to assist students, um, we're looking at starting back up in September. So what we'll be doing is um, at, at the moment we're looking at, at some blended learning options, but on that website link we have um, various questions or frequently asked questions um, that students have put to us and um, for those that are starting with us as well as for those students that are studying with us this year. So if you have any questions around that, please look at that link. We also are running a series of workshops after this, although this is the last one in the Teachers, Technicians and Advisors series, we are running a series of workshops that are open to the public on Wednesdays. So please do have a look at those if that's something you'd like to get involved with. And we have a variety, a whole massive variety of different types of workshops and activities that we'd love to do with schools and colleges um, regardless as well. And that's on the schools and outreach um, pages of our website. So please do take a look. So for now, I'm going to hand over to Laura, who's going to um, talk to us a little bit about um, the recovery curriculum and how the, the NEAT group, which is the Network of East Anglian 
um, art teachers are going to be uh, responding to that. So Laura, over to you. Hi everybody, thanks Tom. Um, so uh, we wanted to make sure that we had a meeting for NEAT every term. Um, so this is going to be our summer meeting. Uh, I realise that we are based in East Anglia, but actually because it's on Zoom, uh, anyone can join in from anywhere. Um, leading on from Susan Cole's talk um, recently with Newer um, about the recovery curriculum, we wanted to um, share some ideas on things that we've now started to work on. Um, and we also wanted to see if anyone else had been working on anything. So uh, what we'd like to do is to have a meeting on Monday the 13th of July. It's going to be 4 till 5.30 p.m. Um, and you can book onto um, the Zoom meeting uh, via NUA. So they'll be posting the links for us. Um, and the agenda is going to be as follows. Um, we're going to discuss the recovery curriculum. Um, but we're actually going to discuss how ideas, you know, how the visual arts can um, work with this. Um, what we'd love to do is share with you um, ideas that we've had um, to work with our own students on return in September. But we'd also like to hear what you guys are doing as well. So if anyone's um, started anything um, to do with what they're going to um, work with with their students um, from September in terms of a recovery curriculum, uh, I'm going to put in the chat our email address if you um, want to share anything. Um, let us know in advance and we can give you a slot um, in the meeting so that it's not always just us talking. Uh, we also want to share what we've learned in lockdown because actually there's been some real positives about the way um, we've had to deal with it and the way we've had to work. Um, so we're going to discuss um, some of the things that we've done, so things like developing digital portfolios, using videos to support learning um, and a few other things. Um, and again, feel free to share anything that you may have um, found as you've been um, grappling with working online um, and then we would like to also talk about what the future looks like for art and design um, and obviously that is pending at the moment due to guidelines that I believe have come out today that I've seen one or two messages about um, so that's really it the recovery curriculum what we've learned in lockdown as art teachers um, and what we think the future might look like um, we would love you to bring a pen and paper a Zoom mascot, um, which can be just a mug or an accessory. We just thought we'd have a bit of fun with that. And what we'd actually love to see is the workspaces that you've been working at at home. Um, so if you'd like to share a photo of your setup at home for, for teaching from home, um, we'd love to just be able to share those. Um, and again, I will um, post our email address um, in the chat on here. Um, and then finally, there will be time in that session um, for us all to chat and take, take um, questions and things as well. Um, so that's everything. Um, so Tom, I think oh, back to you. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much. That sounds really exciting. Um, so uh, just a, a couple of extra points um, before I hand over to Des. Um, in the event that you, you weren't able to receive a, a pack if you did um, request one, um, Des is going to be going through some of the resources that you're going to be using early on. Some of them are really simple um, bits of kit that you'll be having around your house. Um, so you will be able to get involved with at least a, a few of these activities if you haven't uh, got that pack. Um, we will be um, sending out evaluation forms at the end of uh, this workshop so if you could please spend just a few minutes uh, giving us your feedback on what's worked about this what we could do better for the future uh, that would be so beneficial for us so thank, thank you in advance um, other than that this workshop is going to last around an hour um, and then we're going to be um, taking questions at the end so at the end of the activities if you need to head off then that's fine but if you'd also uh, like to ask any questions or, or be involved with the conversation then please feel free to join us um, I think that's all I've got to say. So without further ado, Des, over to you. Okay, everybody. Are you all ready? Are you feeling, uh, feeling pretty creative? Um, right, well, here we go. I'll, um, firstly, I just wanted to say um, thanks ever so much for, for uh, all of you for taking part today. Um, welcome to, to anyone who's new to this and um, who's not, who didn't take part last time. But... Um, and uh, welcome back those of you who, who, who participated in the last session um it's good to see some some uh, some some of you returning um now th this is going to be uh, the attempt here is to to kind of develop on from the last workshop and for those of you who weren't part of the last session um we're, we're going to be publicizing a work worksheet for both both of these sessions so you'll be able to catch up but um where where in the last the last workshop we looked at 
um, mass and and form through casting. Today we're going to look at working in a much more um, perhaps more ephemeral way. Um, we're going to look at drawing in a, in hopefully a, a, a another more accessible way to consider how we we work with drawing. We're going to look at um, scale. Uh, we're going to harness uh, ideas about scale and um, you're going to hopefully it'll provoke you and you hopefully you'll, you'll think about how sculpture can can operate on the table it can speak of really much more kind of monumental possibilities um, that could speak of architecture um, it could speak of uh, processes and subject areas that might include forming things through drawing so it could be I was even thinking with some of these it could be uh, applied to um, sort of textile design based workshops or graphics um, all sorts of things like that so hopefully there'll, there'll be something bit of something for everyone um, what you'll need um, if you've got your kind of your box of tricks at hand or those of you who, who might not have received that but uh, you might want to, to consider what we have um, today we'll be using um, my, um, some sheets of paper some A3 paper A4 paper um, a piece of wire uh, it could be a piece of garden wire it could be um, a piece of uh, armature wire. We've got some plasticine, uh, but that could also be clay or even a lump of blue tack, which will be fine. Um, any tape will do, but hopefully you've got your gaffer tape that you were supplied. Um, I asked you also to to be um, to have a, a slice of bread, and the cheaper cheaper the better. Can you hold up your bread, please, everybody? Let's see the bread. All right? Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Now this isn't a. This, for those of you who might have some sourdough or some artisan bakery bread, this isn't the kind of workshop for that. Right. Um, the cheaper the better, because the cheaper bread has got a lot more kind of pliability to it. Thank you, very good. Susie just had to go and get some. Well done, thank you. Thanks, everybody. So um, that's what you need. And also your, your little figure. If, you, if those of you have uh, got a small architectural figure in your box, that's even better. So they're the kind of materials uh, a soft pencil or a graphite stick or charcoal would do, uh, and also um, a pair of scissors. And that's kind of it. A table to work on, um, some sunlight or some direct or reasonably indirect strong sunlight would be great. If you haven't got any of those and you're working in a, in a somewhere a little less lit, um, then um, a reading lamp would do. So. Um, you can kind of orchestrate that with a reading lamp if you need to. But uh, I would say in this instance, even the kind of darker day or a more cloudy day will still suffice because um, there will still be some shadow. Okay, that was kind of cryptic. Um, so what else? Yeah, the, the, this whole session today, we'll, we'll wrap this up um, in, uh, within the hour, but hopefully by the end of it, you'll have explored um, observational drawing, tonal drawing, drawing in space, architecture, uh, modelling, um, scale, and we're also going to be harnessing nature. We're going to be harnessing um, the sun. We're going to be using something 93 million miles away from us, so that's quite exciting. So I'm thinking about the kind of paucity of materials here, and if I think there's something really exciting and liberating about not having a great deal of stuff at hand, and, and how you can make the most of that. So um, here we go. Are you ready for this? Right, what I, what I would like you to do first is to grab your piece of wire. So just uh, wherever, you, whichever wire you've got, whatever you've got to work with, just, um, now I, I, I've got uh, the, the wire that was supplied has got a very nice memory to it. So that the, the, the more muscle memory or sculptural memory this wire has got, the better. So if it kind of holds its form, if you can see that, then the better. So. Uh, garden wire is pretty good, and any of you uh, might might some who might be um, have something like a kind of a I don't know a piece of um, aluminium wire that would do. So copper wire, anything would do. And what I want you to do with this wire is just get a feel for its properties first, and, and just run it through your hands, and just get a kind of a sense of this really kind of it's a very overlooked material and a very un, unappreciated material in many ways. But um, I would like you to to consider both ends of your wire. And imagine one end is the starting point and the other end is the finish. And I simply want you to describe a journey with this wire. And I want you to describe the journey in three dimensions. So instead of a, a flat image, 
you're going to create a, a, a three-dimensional sculptural drawing of a journey. And this journey could be a kind of psychic journey. It could be a physical journey. It might be something really, it could be the journey from your, the bathroom to the kitchen. Um, it could be a journey from your house to a friend's place or the shops. But it could also be a much more expansive journey. Think about a journey that was, that kind of covered thousands of miles or um, a topographical journey. And I'd like you to, at your starting point, just manipulate the wire according to the direction of travel and the orientation. So I'm thinking about leaving my flat and walking down Ketz Hill into town. So I'm kind of I'm manipulating my wire downhill, across the road, I take a left, I go under a bridge, and so on. So just, just take a bit of time playing around with this. Of course, this could be an imaginary journey as well, and it doesn't even have to be a real journey. So think about how we understand the journey and the route. And, and we talk about mapping a lot, I think, in, in art making. We, we often, uh, as educators, we talk about mapping and what a psychic map or what a physical map is. And, and it's a very important graphic tool, I think, for, for teaching. So I want you to think of the map as a much more three-dimensional route and, and the journey becomes a line and the line becomes a topography and so forth. So just spend a bit of time forming this, this, this map, this journey. And I would like your sort of finishing point, if possible, to be where you started. So you start and finish at the same place. And where you start and finish, you, you just tie that together. So literally, so work on your route. Um, you might want to think about height, depth, orientation. Okay, and I'll um, I'm going to place mine up here. Well, it's looking quite interesting. I'm 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 enjoying seeing the uh, the wire being manipulated in so many different ways. Good. And I think some, one, of the, one of the other elements to this is that th this is a drawing, but it's also a sculpture. And it's a sculpture that has presence in space. Um, so a sculpture doesn't have to be mass. It doesn't have to be solid. It could be much more uh, ephemeral or delicate. Looking good. All right. So I'll give you a couple of minutes now just to wrap these up. Um, but it's a nice kind of thought. If you, if you imagine things like, a, I imagine this is almost the equivalent of a, a, what might be a kind of a, a vapor trail or a, the way that a, a sort of air traffic controller might plot a plane journey or, um, or the way in which we, we might think of a kind of underground journey. Have you, if you've ever been to any underground station in London, they have a, a sort of cut out map sometimes of, of the tunnel systems and the walkways. So it, it, it's a, it, could be a, it could be a much more kind of furtive kind of map drawing that you're making here. Um, it could be very complex. And I suppose with the kind of way we're thinking with lockdown and the way we're thinking about how we, we've existed in, in the spaces we are in, um, this journey might be a repetitive journey. It might be a series of repeated routes that you take over and over again. Okay. So, how are you all doing? So I'm kind of getting to the, getting to the end of mine. So I've got something, if I hold my paper up, something along those lines, okay? If you can see that, some kind of three-dimensional drawing, okay. So the next, the next part of this uh, uh, is as follows, and, and uh, we're going we're gonna to employ this as a, a tool to draw with as well. So it's, um, on the one hand, it's a sculpture, and it's a sculpture that, um, that is, th has got three-dimensional qualities, it's got tone, tonal values, but I'd like you to get a, a piece, a piece of A4 paper, A3 paper, and I'd just like you to place it on that paper. And the idea about this with this is that I'd like you to use this, this surface as your, your kind of flat, your, your, your horizon maybe. All right. Good. 
So you've got your, um, your paper. And if you place it on your paper, you'll probably notice if you can see okay with this. If you look very carefully, there's some very subtle shading and shadows being cast by the light, by the sun. And this is the bit where, where you're, we're, harnessing, we're harnessing nature and um, using the sun to, to cast its shadows on, on the form. And as you can see, the, with mine, certainly it's a very cloudy day today, but the sun's casting some really subtle shadows, some really sharp shadows as well. And if you can, you might want to leave the, the, the drawing on the paper or you might want to move it somewhere else, but this is going to be um, a drawing that will, can exist over time. So we're harnessing something else here, we're harnessing time, because I'd like you to, if you can, take an, uh, a piece of tape from your sticky tape dispenser, and very, very carefully, just to fix it, even if it's just it's one fixing point or two, just fix, your drawing to the paper like so okay the smaller the better and then i would like you to place it somewhere uh where you can work on it so somewhere that it won't be disturbed okay so whether that's on your a, a part of, on one side of your table or you might want to stick it on a wall but what would be great is if you could locate it somewhere that isn't, where it isn't disturbed and it won't be disturbed for at least an hour, possibly more. Because what I'd like you to do is to return to this over and over again and keep drawing with it and on it. So the point about this is that the, the paper you've placed the draw, this sculpture on is going to be, uh, the, will, will hold your drawing. And all I'd like you to do is to trace the shadow that's been cast on the paper with a pencil or a charcoal or whatever you've got and i'd like you to concentrate on drawing as accurately as you can the shadow that's been cast on the paper so really have a good look at this i mean it's it's such <laughs> such a, a a simple kind of process of uh, where that you know with sun hits object object casts a shadow on the paper but there's a really beautiful and subtle set of shadows that are being cast on the paper. So I don't, I don't want you to draw the, I don't need to draw the wire. I'd like you to draw over the shadow and draw an, as much tone as you can according to the strength of the tone that's being cast on the paper. So I hope that makes sense. So just spend a couple of minutes now um, tracking that shadow on your paper. All right. So I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, good. So again, it's a it's an it's a drawing. It's a tracing. Um, you're tracing the shadow. I've got quite strong shadows. The nearer the paper, where the contact with the paper occurs, but also where it's happening away from the paper, where the the the, the wire elevates itself. It becomes a little bit more subtle and for some of you, you might have really 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 strong shadows some might have a little bit more subtlety and i'd just like you to work on that now don't be too precious with this but the beauty of using something like charcoal is you can sort of use it to smudge a shadow in as well and it it probably um it probably stands to reason that the, the, why I want you to leave it somewhere undisturbed is because it, the longer you leave this drawing, or the longer you leave this, the object on the paper, the, as the sun tracks itself across the, the sky, the shadow will change. Of course it will. So I'd like you then to redraw that. And we'll try and do that a bit later on in the session. We'll do at least one more. Um, but if you imagine leaving this up during the day, then you might have a, a series of really fascinating uh coordinates that you've plotted through drawing and they'll all be coming from these points of fixing where the where the, the wire has been attached to the paper that will be your kind of uh your your fixed point but the rest of the drawing will become this hopefully this series of marks um that will will reflect the sun's journey so we're using time we're using the sun we're using a cheap bit of paper from you from your printer 
and a piece of wire. But but this is for me a very significant way of working because we're we're harnessing we're harnessing something that's massive and and inconceivably huge and it's it's in our hands. And I think that's really exciting. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting a bit overexcited about that, but um, I notice uh, Gwen, you're outside already. Gwen, Gwen's iPad, you're outside in the garden, which is quite exciting. So you have you got a decent shadow going on out there? <laughs> so 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 so. Um, and then Art Pocket, you've got a uh, you looks like you've got some pretty good sunlight in there. Very nice. Wow, looking good. I'm looking great. <laughs> The action's happening right now. Um, okay, we'll just do it for another minute, and then um, we'll we'll move on. But um, we'll we'll come back to this. Um, I think importantly, if, when we when we think about drawing and drawing over time and and, uh, and observational drawing and tracing, then then I'm 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 trying to sort of compress all of those things into this into this activity. Um, so imagine doing this drawing over like every hour of a calendar week or uh, or once at the same time every day of the week and you produce seven drawings on the same piece of paper or once every month over a calendar year and, and you start to stretch things out it could become a maybe a kind of meditative process but it would be hopefully a, a really interesting combination of of uh, time and and scrutiny all right okay so we, we're looking good um yeah just another we'll just wrap up in another minute I think actually I'm giving you another minute because some of you are still kind of cracking on. Do take a photograph of this if you can, um, and uh, and leave it, put it somewhere, or, or keep it keep it undisturbed. Um, or if you have to move it, just try and kind of keep the orientation as, as it is. Um, okay. Um, hi, Rebecca Lennox. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, it's it's a tricky thing, but. But there's something um, I won't get too cosmic on you here, but I think it's, some, it's something fascinating about working on a kitchen table and you're dealing with something that's vastly s expansive and, uh, and <laughs> spatial. And that's why I kind of think of it as drawing, drawing in space and drawing with space. Um, I don't know if you could do it with the moon. That'd be kind of interesting if you could try it with the moon, full moon as an alternative. Um, Good. Okay. Right. Well, set that to one side, everybody. And I'd like you to take uh, another piece of paper and a pair of scissors. So I'll uh, I'll just relocate my um. Just ignore my chaotic room, and uh, I'll, I'll go back to the um back to here. Okay. Hopefully, you can see that. So I've got a pair of scissors and I've got a piece of paper. And for this session, you are going to make a piece of monumental architecture with a piece of A3 or A4 paper. And to do that, you'll, you'll also need your, your little friend here. So if you've got, if you've got a, an architectural model, even better. If you've got a Playmobil figure or a Lego man or a toy soldier or a lump of blue tack shaped roughly in the shape of a person even better um thank you heidi good to see you've got your figure there very well done good right um and this is a session this is a, this this activity is really straightforward i'd like you to make i'd like to make a series of cuts in your paper i'd like to make three cuts in your paper but what i don't want you to do is to split the paper apart it needs to remain attached so that it's not in pieces effectively so with your scissors you can make three cuts they can be as 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 uh, eccentric as you like or as logical as you like um doesn't really matter where you do them um and i'm going to do oh, i'm going to tear one i'm feeling radical i'm going to tear one So, so you should have your piece of paper should still be together, but you need to have three, three cuts that have been made. All right. Fairly straightforward there. Doesn't have to be uh, too complex. The next thing I'd like you to do is to, to make three folds in the paper. All right. So three cuts and three folds. So the folds could be any way you like. Um, 
So I'm folding mine here. In there. You might want to fold it back on itself. So, piece of paper, three cuts, three folds. So I've just done a couple of, uh, I've folded one or two bits uh, that I've already cut and I've just made a crease along one other side. So I've got three creases, three cuts. Then take your tape dispensing device that's come with your pack. Excellent, excellent work everybody. And take three tabs, make three tabs of gaffer tape and find three points of contact. So take, take your paper and just look at maybe weaving the paper in and out of itself and look for ways in which you could just form points of contact. So, okay. Just to say, Des, yes. we, some people will have masking tape. The masking tape yeah. is a substitute for the gaffer yes. Yeah, I mean... Um, our supplier. I, I, yeah, don't feel, I don't want you to feel kind of... Um, uh, you know, don't feel like you're left out if you've got masking tape. I've got no problems with masking tape. Um, I can't live without gaffer tape, but I'm a sculptor. So if, 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 if the world was without gaffer tape, I'd, I'd, I'd struggle. So, um, but yeah, any tape will do. I mean, the invisible 3M tape is pretty good too. Scotch tape is fantastic. Um, so all I want you to do is just, you, know, you, you can make this as complex as you want it to be. Um, and just be instinctive. It doesn't really... It doesn't really matter. Just get to get a feel for the paper and what you're making, and uh, and then you'll start to something. I think I think quite magical happens where the moment you kind of fix it together, it takes three dimensional form, and I think that's really exciting. So just uh, see how you go on. And you, you, you know, don't feel uh, it's it needs to be a particular shape. It um, you might want to. Um, try a couple of these later further down the line but what happens is you 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 start to have a, a shape that's eccentric it has qualities of internal space external space um and tone and line all the all the juicy things that we have in a piece of sculpture um just with a, a piece of paper all right okay so i hope you can see this all right Good. There's some really intriguing uh, models going on here. Um, it's great to see them taking shape. Um, of course, the um, it occurred to me, if you want to sort of contextualise this in any way, um, I suppose the nearest the nearest I, I, I would I, I could think of would be something like Frank Gehry's uh, architecture. If anyone's been to Bilbao or um, Dundee, uh, there's, uh, or even uh, I think um, North London, um, in North London, the uh, University of North London. Um, he has this kind of really eccentric way of working uh, where the, 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 the kind of ceilings and the roof structures and the walls are curved and bent. This, he's done a piece in Prague as well. So that's, that's your piece of architecture. Now, once you've done this, you might want to just take a couple of photographs of it and uh, in your pack, this is where your little figure comes in. And with your, with your little person you've got, take the smallest piece of blue tack or plasticine that you've got, take a little lump of that off and just stick it on his feet. Just for, just for the purpose of this photograph. So there he is. He's got little, but not massive balls, just as small as you can. And you can then just sit in in front of your piece of architecture. And hey presto, you've got this, this extraordinary piece of architecture and a figure to go with it. And I'd like you to just take a couple of snaps of that. Um, you're getting on over there. Great. Rosemary, you, you've got a helper as well. You've got your studio assistant, which is good to see. <laughs> Are you making two? Oh, 
fantastic, fantastic. Right. Are you competitive? <laughs> Good. Good to see. Um, Abby, that's looking great. I really love the shadows that have been cast in yours, Abby. Um, really good to see. Great. Yes, let us know if you'd like to invite people in to have a little chat as well. We can race well, around and try to find them. Yeah, we will. I think what we'll do, Tom, is we'll just get start. We'll get started with the drawing, and then I'll I'll do a bit of a trawl. I think, and uh, cool. pick, on, pick on a few candidates, and we'll see how we're doing. Um, take a few shots of these, everybody, and then we'll move on to the to the next phase. Okay. And this is where this is where I'd like you to um, work with tonal drawing. So what I'd like you to do next is to to make an observational drawing of this. So I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit, but but at the same time, I want you to make a really loose, vibrant drawing, and in the best sort of tradition of, of life drawing. Um, I'd like, how many pieces of paper have you got there? You should have a couple of sheets of paper at hand. I'd like to have at least two sheets of paper if you have them. And if you haven't, you might just need to fold the paper up into two, um, just to enable us to do a couple of drawings here. Um, so what I'd like you to do firstly, I'm going to give you two minutes, and I'd like you to make a two minute tonal drawing of your piece of architecture or uh, an element or an, a part of your architecture. So it's entirely tonal and that's the beauty of this you can see some really sharp hopefully some sharp cuts of of line and tone um, as the as the, the the folds and the cuts relate to each other and so just spend two minutes really really quickly well two minutes is two minutes isn't it so it's not quick or slow it's just two minutes but spend two minutes making a tonal drawing just go for it and try to omit anything any external factors just draw the thing itself okay so I'll give you two minutes now. And as we as we do that, I'll um have a chat with a few of you as we're doing it. Yeah, Rosemary, I, I wanted to kind of pick, I'm gonna pick on you a bit whilst you're doing this and uh, and your or your assistant, whoever. Um so Tom, if you could uh, summon up Rosemary, she's on the yeah number two. Ask to uh, if she's able to chat. Are you in a good, can you, yes, the, mic the microphone's off at the moment. Hello. Hi, Rosemary, hi. Yes, right, you, I'm just intrigued by the, your sort of dual, dual uh, uh, studio practice going on here. Um, yeah, multitasking. <laughs> I, like the I like the look of your, your pieces, so, so if you don't mind just uh, sort of angling your, your camera down, I'd just really like to have a peek. Uh, it might be a bit difficult with this one because it's a desktop. I'll, oh, I'll... is it? Yeah, fine, you want to hold it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, blended, yeah. I mean, d do you see the sort of architectural kind of qualities in that now? Yeah, I really like the uh, zigzags. With it. I should mm -hmm. put the light on over here because we haven't got much light here. Yeah, okay. I'll just put the light on to cast the shadows. But but what you've got there is um uh you know you, you know, simple and who what, what who's your assistant? What's your assistant? Freya. Freya, hello Freya. Well done, nice yeah. job. Um, the, I don't want, I don't want to judge who's made the better one. <laughs> it's not about that, but uh, it's great to see. So um the, the great thing about this is you you've got now a, a you know it's it's entirely tonal, isn't it? So you can you can yeah. the, the drawing can just be can respond to what you've got there. It's not it's not kind of interfered with by kind of texture or anything like this it's just a purely tonal drawing yeah um, we've got we've got the charcoal out for his first time okay. with charcoal so that's going to be interesting <laughs> <laughs> all right well i won't disturb you anymore um those of you who've kind of finished this first drawing will roll it over and do another two minute drawing so turn your turn your piece around in another orientation if you can and uh and, and just execute another drawing we'll time it for another two minutes um 241 now according to my my, my stopwatch so it's just a bit more of an involved kind of combination of making and drawing. But whilst you're drawing this, just, just to sort of a, a, allow yourself to consider the, the qualities of space and surface uh, and edge and tonal values to this. Um, but also maybe think about this as, a, as a, a model for something. Imagine that this becoming a model, a proposal for something else. Um, and I was looking at um, Hello, Tom, if you could uh, scroll me on, L is that Linda Tucker, can I, I hope you don't mind, but I'm just intrigued, but I think the, sh the shadow there is really good in your, you've got lots of direct light. Um, 
good. So as you're drawing again, think about, think about what you've got is, is not, not just being a piece of paper. Think about, about it as being a, a, a proposal, a model, a model for architecture. And uh, so in, in many ways, you, you don't need balsa wood or 3D printing or um, concrete to make an architectural model. This, a piece of A3 paper will suffice. What could of course happen after this is you could photograph it and then use Photoshop to then apply surfaces and textures onto this. So it doesn't really, you know, this is a starting point. But it could also be manufactured in the workshop. You could develop this through using sheets of aluminium or hot form that, um, acrylic and that sort of thing. Um, okay, good. So finally, finally, now that you've done this, I just, I would like you to, if you've done two of these sort of tonal drawings, for, for the last one, another just another two minute drawing, I'd like you to get, kind of go inside this now and, and really focus on, on, on an aspect of the, the kind of inside of the piece. So where you've got a kind of internal aperture, um, something somewhere that, it, that you're almost lost inside it. So imagine you're inside the building and fill your paper with a, as much tonal kind of register as you can. That should take us uh, neatly to our next project. Oh, very. Jo is it Joanna? Joanna Bunce? Hi, Joanna. Hi, can, Tom, can we scroll across to Joanna? I'm, uh, this is a splendid piece of architecture going on there. Hello. Hi, Joanna. How are you? Yeah, yeah, this is really good. It's Hi. so simple. So simple. I did a spiral, some zigzags, and then this yeah. thing together. And but then, uh, like this, the shapes, trying to do it with the uh, the charcoal. But it's such a cool idea. So simple. It, it's really simple, and it's like you know, you grab a you know, nick a few sheets of paper from the uh, from the office, and then um, yeah. off you go. But uh, yeah, you've made a really uh, really complex uh, s structure there, which is very intriguing. Yeah. Um, but but I'm I'm, in, I'm now imagining this in with you know, if I'm if I was raiding the workshop as well, I'd be thinking, yeah, that could be sheets of kind of cut pieces of aluminium riveted together or yeah. even pieces of lead flashing or something or cardboard even stored cardboard yeah definitely it does remind me of like the ocean or something as well something quite yeah. natural yes it could uh, so it could actually have more kind of more um yeah it could be more expansive possibilities than architecture couldn't it i was uh, yeah. when i was when i was working this through with tom the other day i was thinking well this this could also be a kind of an adornment a kind of body adornment mm -hmm. or a some kind of I don't know since the headpiece yeah it's just a thought but it could, it could be reduced down it could be a much smaller object um, anyway yeah. good good to see thank you very much where are you for, where are you based where are you calling from oh Tom we lost some time sorry Des I <laughs> I closed down that conversation because <laughs> it looks pretty sunny over there isn't it? it's not it's not very really sunny yeah Hi, Joanna, where, where are you based? Uh, so um, I teach in Dagenham and I, I live in Essex. So uh, just down the road from me, really, I think. <laughs> a few hours anyway. <laughs> very welcome. It's great that we can, can compress all of you from disparate parts of the country or yeah. beyond into, into this room, which is great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, Joanna. Thank you. Um, okay, everybody. Right, so um, let's just very quickly um, just hold up your, your drawer. I'd just love to see all of you, just one of your selected drawings. Thank you very much. Wow. Wow, I'm, uh, I'm in awe. This is like six minutes of work and you've produced these. Great to see, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Wow, yeah, these are so varied and rich. Um, hello, Will. <laughs> it's very exciting to see. And, and you're, you're now making, for me, this, this work has now gone beyond the paper. It's become, gone beyond the, 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 the object and it's now become, these drawings could, could operate on their own terms. So, so think about these as also being kind of d drawings or, or abstractions that then could be developed further. It could be that they, um, they could have a sort of painterly quality or a, a collage quality to them. You know, you might think of the textures that you've been describing uh, with your, your um, drawing materials. All right, good. Uh, right, one, one quick uh, pause, everybody. Just go and have a look at your, um, your, sh your shadow drawing. And if, you, if there's been an incremental change in the last 20 minutes, which there should be, or there might, might be, then just indicate that and, and uh, track it. Yeah, mine's, mine's moved. 
and just very quickly add some shading. It's, it's, in, it's infinitesimally slight, but it's there. And even if you've moved your paper or moved the thing, then do another drawing. And again, this doesn't have to be too neat and strict, but just try and track the shadows that you've made. We'll do this for a minute or so. Okay. Good. Right. On to the next project then, everybody. Genevieve, how are you doing over there? All right, good, yeah, thumbs up, excellent, good. Okay, everybody, so we're gonna change tack now and I'm going to ask you to grab your piece of plasticine and break it into two or three and just start warming up in your hands. So this this exercise is a a nice a nice change of change of a uh, manoeuvre. Um, get it get it warm. If you've got clay or blue tack, that's fine. Um, any other mullable material uh, might do. Um, putty, if you've got it, whatever, it doesn't matter. But um, I'd like you just to start warming this stuff up. And if it's sufficiently warm, great. If you've got it kind of uh, going, you might need to break it down into smaller bits if you need to. It's often useful um, if you're sculpting with plasticine or wax or something to have a couple of pieces in one hand and have the other piece in the other. So you're constantly warming one whilst modeling with the other. Um, but plasticine, again, it's a, it's a, I think it's a, an, an oft relegated material to, uh, to, to use. And actually, I think it's fantastic because not only can you reuse it, it's got excellent plastic qualities. Um, hence the name, I suppose. Um, I don't actually even know what it's made of. So if anyone can help me with that, I, I'll be very grateful. It, it's, it's just made of magical stuff. Um, so we, we're, talking, we, we're dealing with a material that's got memory and plastic qualities. And this exercise is much more about your haptic skills and your ability to model and form something using your powers of memory and feel and touch. So I'd like you to close your eyes. I want you to all to close your eyes. Now Tom and Liv are monitoring this right now. So any of you who start thinking, even thinking about opening their eyes, there'll be a kind of like a buzzer. It'll be like that kind of, there'll be, I don't know, I don't know what we'll do. We'll, we'll kind of, we'll, we'll, we'll out you as, as, as uh, cheats and, um, and you'll have to pay some terrible penalty. Um, so just warm up the, the, the clay or the plast plasticine and close your eyes. Now feel now what I hope you're 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 sensing now is a much stronger, a much stronger haptic sensation where you're you're feeling the kind of the the, the, the material in your hands and you're just modeling it in your hands. You might be squashing it between your palms, your fingers. And what I'd like you to do is to, out, whilst you're doing this, start to visualize an object or a thing or, a, or some tangible thing in your mind that exists. It could be something pertinent to you. It might be something that you've, in, you've seen before. It might be something famous. It might be a landmark. It might be something ordinary. It doesn't really matter. Just, um, it could be banal. Um, but I'd like you to visualize something. I'd like you to make it. I'd like to model it without looking. So I want you to spend the next three or four minutes just modeling and forming a thing, whatever that thing might be. And this is where the temptation to look might be strong, but trust me, Tom and Liv are gonna be on you. So, uh, so, so please don't, don't incur their wrath. Um, 
to just keep your eyes closed and feel this plasticine and start making this thing. Okay. Now, often, often uh, uh, when we think about sort of sculpture, we do we think about modelling. Um, of course, we do, and um, you know, modelling is, is an important facet of, of making sculpture. But I think what's interesting about this is is the is the is the, is the, the consideration of modelling against, say, three D modelling, and and I think there, there's some really interesting kind of. Uh, oppositions here and, and, and between what we do with our hands, the haptic modeling and using something like th a 3D printer. We talk about modeling in, in sort of digital modeling, don't we? And I think this is a really, it could be a very exciting kind of exercise where you, you might want to sort of compare this to modeling digitally using uh, software um, and, and how, that might, how that might compare. Because the, the, um, the way we model with our hands it relies on our kind of instinct and our, our, our motor skills. Um, now, some of you are making some intriguing things. Um, let's, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to, um, it doesn't really matter now. So Tom, can you take me over to Art Pocket? I'm intrigued by this, there's some rolling going on over here or some, but, but um, what's going on over there? What's happening? There's, I Hello. think me and um, Liv are competing over unmuting uh, Hannah Law. So, um, Liv, if you'd like to do it, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> okay, fine. I think the other thing, sorry to join in here, but I think Hannah Law will have to accept our request to unmute. Oh. So she was intently modelling. <laughs> yeah. Am I allowed to open my eyes? Well, oh, don't, don't look at your thing. Yes, okay. You, can, you don't have to open your eyes. You can keep them closed. We can, we can have a conversation. Oh, eyes, eyes closed. It's fine. What, what, uh, what are you modelling? What are you thinking I of? I model the water tower on the way to London. <laughs> wow. Do you know the one? The, the kind of triangular one. Well, the one with a kind of upside down, like a funnel shape. Upside down funnel, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I do know. I do know. Wow. Okay, excellent. So you're mod <laughs> That's a very I sculptural think thing to think of, yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you are you are you aware of the um there's a there's a thing for kind of water towers there's a kind of water tower admiration society yeah yeah uh, the people <laughs> can like travel, travel around looking at water towers very sculptural things thank you all right great that's good to see <laughs> um <laughs> so if any, thank you thanks for, thanks for that thank you very much for that um let's move along um let's see who else is out there um Yeah. Okay, Jane, you don't have to say anything, but I'm just, you're holding up a very intriguing looking cuboid shape. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, Ruth, Ruth Stanley, hello again. Hi, how are you doing? Okay, thanks. Good, very good. Now, what are you modelling? I actually glanced at it then. <laughs> what? What? Then, just oh, then right. when I, I looked at the screen. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not looking at it now. <laughs> um, there's a bit of there's a glass sculpture I made about 10 years ago that I've got over in the corner of my room. And it's the first thing I thought of when you said make something interesting. And it's of like a bit of coral that I made using lost wax casting. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I'll probably go and find that at the end and then put the next yeah, one. Compare and contrast. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be really good. That's a really nice idea, actually. We're sort of taking something, you know, I mean, this, this, I mean, you're making, this could be extended, couldn't it? You could start making, trying to remem remember things that you have around you, then compare them yeah. by photographing them next so that's that's a really that's my a memory is traditionally quite bad so it'll be interesting to see if i've even got it remotely <laughs> correct yeah okay great well okay everybody thank you ruth um what what i'd like you to do now is to take your your object your thing that you've made and i'd like this is where the we asked you to kind of be located near a window or uh, in, in in a in a with a with a, a window sort of position to, to, to be able to photograph this. I'd like you to um, just have a look at, Tom, do you mind just summoning up the, uh, the David Smith picture for me, please? We can just show, show them what, what we're getting at. So, okay, everybody, look, th these are some works by the, the great American sculptor, David Smith. And uh, on the left is, is a, a piece called Hudson River Landscape, which um, it's twofold. I wanted to show you this because I think it relates really well to the, the, the initial drawing that you did in wire, because this is effectively a sculptural drawing in three dimensions. This is literally his recounting of a journey from New York up to his studio up in the Adirondack Mountains. And he, and he 
it's a it's a sort of psychic drawing and a physical drawing uh, and, a, and a memory drawing of traveling up this route and what I like about it is it it, it continues it constantly moves you you hopefully if you follow your eyes along it they kind of loop and go down and around and they just kind of craggy outcrops so th there's a there's a sort of physical relationship to the landscape and on the right is the piece called, one of his series called cubi the cubi sculptures now the, the the main reason why i wanted to show you these is is the way they're photographed look at the way he's photographed them against the landscape so the piece on the the piece on the left is actually quite modest in scale it's not not very big at all um, um sorry that's my alarm going off um it's a quite a modest sculpture but he's photographed it against the landscape to suggest scale to suggest something much more massive than it is and to an extent the piece on the right the cubi sculpture it is a lot bigger but against nature it's it's quite modest but he's photographed it with the landscape around it to to, to enable a sense of scale to occur so so for that reason, I'd like you to take your, your object, your mystery object that you've made, your thing, and I'd like you to locate it. Thank you, Tom. I'd like you to locate it in, a, in, a, in the window, in a windowsill. Stick it on some books or on a pot, or a, but I'd like you to photograph it with the outside surrounding it. And try and photograph it as if you're standing in front of it. So try and remove any um, indication of a base, or the bottom, all you hopefully have is effectively the sculpture to photograph without the context, without the kind of anything to, to give the scale away. And photograph it against your window, um, whatever it could be, an urban scene, doesn't really matter, but it hopefully it will evoke a sense of scale. So think about those Smith photographs and just place it on something. I've put it on a, you know, I'll put mine on a few books or something and just, um, just take a couple of shots of that, please. Good. Great. Uh, I, I found just stick it on a box or a couple of books will do. Um, but I'm hoping that this will give you a sense of scale and it'll make this small handmade thing look massive or at least suggest scale. Oh, who's, who did that? This is yours, Tom, isn't it? Yeah, nice. Yeah, and, yeah and these are examples from our trial run. Yeah, no, note, note Tom's placed his, his figure next to it as well, which is a really nice way of kind of evoking scale as well. Um, so if you can... Uh, if you can try that out, that even better. <laughs> now, of course, another thing you could try is you could even build a, a kind of diorama for this work. So there's nothing to stop you building a, um, some other structure to go with it. Christina Brown, you've got a helper as well. Good to see. <laughs> great. Hello. Very good. OK, everyone, looking great. So. With, with, like we did last time, we would love to see these photographs sent in and, and uh, we'd love to sort of see your own responses and how you've documented your work. So please do um, send them our way. We'd, we'd love to sort of have them and, and share them. Uh, that would be great. Excellent. Good. So you've made, a, you've made a sculpture from memory without looking through handling. You've explored scale and context and we're now at, we're now just at three o'clock so Tom uh, we've got one more exercise it won't take long but uh, how are we for time do you think people are starting to to peel off and that's absolutely fine um but yeah if you'd like to just do because the, the next one's quite a quick one I, I think it's quick. Is it not? Yeah, it's quick. the Freddy one the Freddy one yeah um Good. so yeah I, I think let's continue and if people need to peel off that's absolutely fine um, and we'll also have that, that uh, Q&A session at the end if, if anyone's still got any questions, okay? All right, good, excellent. This will take um, a couple of minutes, but um, this is where the bread comes in, everybody. So grab your bread and tear the crust off. So I'll need to take the crust off your bread. Um, like I said, no artisan sourdough won't really do for this. It needs to be, it needs to be real budget stuff. And with your bread, I'd like you to 
make a sculpture, a bit like the one you've made through modeling, but by compressing the bread, the more you compress it, it'll start to form a kind of doughy consistency. And if you kind of keep squeezing it in your hand, you'll start to make a kind of imprint in your hand. Now, as you can see, it starts to become almost like a, a, like a bread Henry Moore um, or bread Barbara Hepworth. And taking, <laughs> what are we doing? Okay, right. So start to kind of really, don't take any prisoners with this. It, just squash it, just really squash it. And so I'm going to, um, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go full on Henry Moore here and bang out a couple of eyes in here. So this is going to be my pierced form, my pierced form with the 7-Eleven bread. Um, there you go. Okay. So, so there you are. That's my, uh, my sculpture. Okay. So it's a, think of it as a kind of person personage a sort of personage of sorts a kind of a figure spectral figure in bread and here's the deal um you don't have to do this now but what i'd like you to do is to place it somewhere external to your room your house again after we've done this session and i'd like you to photograph it in situ it could be on a window ledge um a bird table a patio a garden in on next door's car doesn't really matter wherever you see fit and i'd like you to photograph it and then observe it over the next couple of hours um and it might disappear it might get eaten by a hungry fox um it might get mutilated by a load of birds oh whose is this whose was that tom that that was that was mine des oh. it, it didn't it didn't last long uh, it, last it felt long. good while it was there Excellent, good. So, so you, you've got. There's almost like a bird, actually. Have you made? A, was that a bird? Did you make a? Did you actually make a bird that, out of that? Bird? Was that was a? Well, it was a bit of a, a happy accident kind of bird. Um, but it 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 works kind of well. But, and then the birds ate it. Yes, good. So <laughs> we, this 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 work is is really. I mean, it's a it's a little bit kind of irreverent. But the what this kind of takes on is is the element of modelling still, time chance and and it's sort of giving something back it's a sort of neutral sculpture it's not you know if, if it, it's literally feeding something but I, I like i like the idea that this could this could kind of go in a number of ways it might just start slowly go moldy and disappear but it might just get eaten and if it's there the next morning then please photograph it if it's being hacked to bits by birds please photograph it in action as it's happening if it's being dragged away by a by a hedgehog then 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 capture it okay so that's your that's your next task beyond this session all right so uh the fate of the bread sculpture uh we need to know we need to know what happens and if anyone if anyone's piece of sculpture survives more than a day then there's definitely got to be a prize there's got to be something in it for you um even if it's just kudos um if you can make it into the second day even better um but it could be a fun thing to do as a kind of a, an activity where you've got multiple people doing it and uh the last the last bread figure standing um it's got to be the winner um okay so look there's J jane picks made a, a a kind of a suggestion um about uh, going back to that drawing she um kind of showed how her, her drawing had um been developing with the sun moving across it so um it might be worth revisiting that and uh before before we head off what, what, why not why don't we do that while we're um while we're wrapping it up then tom yeah if you want to go back to your drawing please do um at some point you might want to sort of if you feel like you've achieved it, you've gone back a number of times, then just remove the metal from the paper. And what you'll be left with is this really beautiful, sort of, uh, subtle tonal drawing. But yeah, yeah, please do go and have another look. It's, it's amazing that, you know, that what, what happens with just, you know, paper and sun. <laughs> um, but we deal with shadow a lot, don't we? We deal with tonal drawing, we deal with observational drawing in many different ways. Um, but hopefully this might kind of provoke thinking around uh, drawing in another way using sculpture. Um, my bread is seeded, it's not bonded. Who's that? Tamsin. Ah, oh, Tamsin, I'm sorry about this. Look, you know, just, just get the cheaper, the cheaper the better, please, all right? Seed, that sounds a bit, that sounds a bit artisan. I think you've been using some artisan bread. Um, uh, um, if you did this at school, we'd be attacked by seagulls, like the birds. It could be like a scene from a Hitchcock film. Um, I only had a bagel and it fell apart. 
Um, yeah, trick of the bagel. I'll try it with the bagel. If you wet the bagel, um, it works pretty well. Um, but then again, at the same time, that bagel in, in itself has got a kind of sculptural quality. It's, it's a pierced form in itself, isn't it, the bagel? You could just cut the bottom off and it could stand up on its own, like a, there's that stone in Cornwall that does that. Um, anyway, right, okay, good. So if anyone's just wanting to kind of, I used a scone. Oh, Jane, 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 Jane. That's, uh, yeah, scone, you'll never have any luck with a scone or scone. Um, what I would su suggest you do with that, it did, did fall apart, bind it together with some butter. I think, and then reform it. That might do. Um, anyway, yes. Uh, well, sourdough definitely doesn't work. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Claire, that's too high end for this activity. Um, and thanks, Stephen. <laughs> Look, everybody, it's been brilliant, really enjoyable working with you today. Um, but what we'll be, we'll kind of hover here for the next sort of however long. So just do do drop in and sort of send us a message or. If you've got any observations or anything, anything you think I, I could, we could do, or anything you might have missed, I'll clarify things for you. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed the the processes that we've been undertaking. Brilliant. Thank you, Des. I, I just want to. We'll, we'll come back to a bit of a Q and A uh, shortly. I just wanted to to plug our quilting through COVID. So, as part of um, one of our initiatives. Uh, at this time is uh, getting students to to basically submit a, a quilted block to us um, and we're going to um, take all of the entries that we receive and then put them into a, a big exhibition we're looking at collaborating with the makers festival where we're going to be showcasing this so if it's something that your students might be interested in um, please take a look at our website to find out more details that's quilting through covid um, and once again that kind of adds on to those hands-on tactile skills and it's something that we'd love to see your entries. And if you have any questions about it, please get in touch with us at student.recruitment at nua.ac.uk. Um, other than that, it would be great if, um, once again, if you were able to submit your evaluation forms, give us your feedback, as Des has mentioned. We'd love to hear what we could be doing with you, how we can be working with you, uh, not just through uh, Sculpture Matters, but through a bunch of our other initiatives as well. But yeah, for, for now, if, if other people need to peel off, that's fine. But we're going to be here on the chat for a little while longer and, um, yeah, responding to your questions that way. We were really inspired by all the photographs that you sent, those of you sent in last time. What, what, what I loved about it was everyone did such different things and the outcomes were also variable. And it's the same, it's the same happening now. So please, all, all the work you're doing, do, do share them, send them to us. We'd love to see them. And, um, but also particularly how, how the work how the work will live beyond this session I, i'd love to know how you you might adapt these develop them change them and, and maybe work with them in some ways whether you, through your teaching or your for your own practice and that would be really fascinating to, to know know you know how the how the work how these projects kind of exist beyond today um <laughs> Freya, Freya's enjoyed her first time with the charcoal and making bread sculptures and eating them. Well, Freya, you've done a great job today. Great, great work in tandem. I've, I've been very impressed. Um, and uh, <laughs> eating some sculptures. Um, yeah, good. Um, yeah, but I think adult learning, yeah, please do try them out. I'd, be, I'd love to know how you get on with, with working with students with this. There was that question about where, where can we see the work? So we'll look at posting it on our Instagram uh, channel. Is, is, um, so it's... Uh, it's uh, outreach, anyway outreach, I think it is. Is that right, Liv? It sure is. And I've just put it in the chat for everyone. So you can Perfect. either um, send them to us on Instagram so you could post them yourselves and tag us in them or right. use the hashtag NUA outreach, or you can also email them to us at our student.recruitment at nua.ac.uk. Please do. I can't wait to see the bread sculptures disappear. <laughs> Uh, the, 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 the one the last the last sculpture standing is is uh, will definitely need is worthy of some accolade isn't it tom live what do you think it is but i wish you hadn't put us under pressure like that <laughs> <laughs> maybe it kind of might be a sourdough loaf from sauce <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> a nice uh, yeah cheap loaf of bread for the winner That's brilliant. and i think like before if we can go for the craziest locations for the photos yeah. yes 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 that um, would be great just, I'm just looking back at some of the, um, oh, Liv, you'd answered it. Sorry, yeah, some of the question from Heidi about cartridge paper. Yeah, any paper, really. We, we, we've gone for cartridge paper just because it's the cheap, uh, or the printer paper, because it's, I know some of you have got cartridge paper, haven't you? Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, I've just used ordinary printer paper, which it doesn't really matter, but um, yeah, really good. Um, Cumbria, Kerry. Kerry Howarth in Cumbria. Wow, hi, Kerry. 
great. This is really, uh, this is kind of getting international. Um, and we've had we've, uh, Fiona in Ireland as well. Um, but some of you, if, if you've had a look at some of those sculptures, um, David Smith's sort of canon is, is fascinating. He photographed a lot of his work in situ where he lived and worked. So um, think about how you, you, know, you place objects and things in a landscape or in your windowsill or in the house and, and, and look at how you can play with scale in really interesting ways. Um, uh, I've, thank you. I've already added plaster Paris sculptures into my year nine textile scheme. I love the wire extension. Uh, this is from, is that, if, who's that from? Yvonne. Yvonne? Why Brittle? I think she's gone. Is she? Oh, hello. Hi. C can we have some, is it, is, yeah, can we have a, can we unmute you? I'd love to know how you've um, embedded this into your, your, um, the textile scheme. Tell me more about this. Well, I'm just going to do exactly what you've, you did it with us in the in the lesson and get them to work with some different colors but then i want to i want to develop it into a little bit of a weaving exercise where they take color uh, colored threads and wools and maybe make it into something um like a sculpture that sounds really fascinating well please please just keep us posted i'd love to know about this um the, the wonderful thing about plaster of paris you can even sort of, you can embed material into it so you could even yeah. use sort of thread waste and wool and set it and that could set into the plaster if you wanted to but um no i'd love to see what you're doing there that'd be really really exciting um okay. so, so so yeah the, and i like that kind of interface between textiles and or sort of soft materials and this kind of hard cast object really that'd be really interesting so so the kind of con the combination so you're going to just sort of pour the plaster into the bag sit the bag on something and um well i was thinking of um that was the one that i did with well, you one, i haven't yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. I haven't had a chance to do it yet. So I was thinking about them weaving. Fantastic. And different you, threads. You could suspend over it. it. Suspended yeah. Space, didn't it? Oh, that, that sounds really good. And that would kind of catch, that would move very gently, I think, in, in really interesting ways. Great. Yeah. Okay, well, good luck with that. Yeah. Okay. Love the Thank you. Okay. Who's that? S. Clark. I love these methods. I'm going to use some of these techniques as part of a year 12 mark making lessons. Uh, yeah, look, you know, mark making is such a, I mean, we, you know, we use mark making, don't we, to kind of talk to students about generating imagery and um, uh, mark making, we, we can use mark making in so many different ways, but this is a, a really, hopefully, a, a, a neat way to get them, to get them mark making, but thinking about space and thinking about time and observation and close observation as well. Um, and the mark making, maybe trying to make marks that relate to the, to the form. So if it's a smooth piece of wire and a soft shadow, how do you make those marks with charcoal or pencil? Um, or how do you use, if you haven't got those materials, how do you use it with a, with a biro? Um, how do you feather tone, tonal values with a biro? Um, yeah, okay, great. Uh, this will contribute well to my gallery of small things scheme that I'm currently building for year seven. A small, small thing scheme. Where's Tamsin? Where's Tamsin? Is Tamsin on here? Hi Tamsin. Do you, mind, do you mind telling me more about this? I like this, Tommy. Are you right to scoot over to Tamsin? Yeah, and then I have oh. to go. All right, Tamsin, just very quickly. No, yeah, I have actually have a faculty meeting in five minutes. Ah, um, right. But uh, yeah, basically, it's kind of based on the Matier workshop. So yes. combining materials together just through time, playing, and then taking them into drawings. But this kind of feeds really nicely <laughs> into that kind of small activities that they can then develop and the idea of process. Yeah. So uh, I make my work through process and having yes. young people kind of explore what art is. That sounds really, that sounds really inspiring because process, I think we, we often, students can sometimes overlook the process and the enjoyment of yeah. building. And, and, you know, we, we're not trying to sort of say this is the end product either. We're, we're just pr promoting a, a process of making that is, is open-ended. Um, yeah, yeah. But also I think uh, to, to encourage young people who uh, sometimes have a block, they yes. stop themselves because they think that they can't do something. So getting them to play and experiment and explore is like, I, I think is the kind of the, the greatest way of teaching, you know? I totally agree. Techniques totally agree. So, yeah, exciting. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. All right, Tamsin, thanks for taking part. Thank you. Hi. Um, uh, so this, uh, I'd love to watch the last Festa. I'd love to watch the last session. That's been recorded, hasn't it, Tom? The last one was the last session we did was recorded. Yes, the, the last session has, has been recorded. So um, if you would like to request it, then please just, um, if you, um, well, we know now, so we, we can drop you an email. So um, yes, we can, we can do that after this session. Heidi Pendergast, Pendergast. Hi, Heidi, can I have a quick word? Can we zoom in on you? Um, 
Hello. Hello. Hello, Heidi. <laughs> Hello. Just up at, hi, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks for taking it. I'll be adding, so you're saying uh, I'll add the paper scu sculpture into the A-level and then go to, onto metal. Great. Fantastic. I'd, again, I'd love to see how what happens there because um, if you got you you you're able to sort of use sort of sheet maybe sheet aluminium. Or that's that's what I'm trying to set up. We set up a new department. Well, I ran a school about four years, five years ago. So we've just had our first group of year 11s through, yes. yeah. and now setting up the sixth form. So I've tried to put in things so I can use sheet metal. I want to get um, I'm trying to get some welders, just for ones I can use in the art room, but not haven't got like a an outside area so I can only use certain ones to solder and um, I want to try and get oh what's the name rivets as well so you can just yeah. rivet them together because I'm more sculptural but I find a lot of schools these days and a lot of art teachers are quite scared of doing 3D or I'm more of a 3D person so I'm trying to bring as much of that into the kids because I think it really helped with the boys as well well look um, this is great I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased and encouraged to hear you saying this that you're kind of trying to kickstart some sculpture going on there where, where are you teaching um, in coventry finland park two so it's a brand new school about four, yeah, yeah. four four or five years ago so i'm just i've just bought some pottery wheels as well so we're going to be doing some throwing and all that type of stuff so. we'll, we'll look you know a couple a couple of drills a couple of wooden blocks yeah. a rivet uh, just a, a little hand rivet um yeah. a, a gun um yeah. and some sheet aluminium you'll be in business uh, that yes. sounds great yeah. uh, please keep us posted i'd love to know how these they get on because yeah, that, that, that move from sort of cheap, you know, cheap printer paper to aluminium then becomes sculpture, then it becomes architecture yeah. or, or yeah. some other kind of form that could work for, for, yeah. for, for another aspect. The other thing I found they really liked, um, recently I've got loads of, you know, the, the air blocks, uh, cement air blocks that you yes, can carve into, yep. yeah, into yeah, loads yeah. of files and yes. they really like that as well. So yeah. you, you, can, <laughs> uh, you, can cut it, you can cut it with a saw as well. So yes, you, yeah, it's yeah. lovely stuff to use. Yeah, lots great. of dust masks. <laughs> yeah, lots, of, lots of dust masks. Great. Well, look, a, scu a sculptural revolution happening in Coventry. I want to know more about this okay, <laughs> to keep us posted. Um, good. Um, uh, who's this then? That's uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Look, Rebecca Lennox, wherever wherever you've been. Thank you for the thank you for that comment. Um, it's really good to hear that because uh, th this this is intended for. In my opinion, I'm, I'm hoping you, you might agree with me that this could this could go from this could be really young learners to A level students to foundation students to just you know I I would be I would this this is also an activity I'd be working with my undergraduates with some you know facets of this activity. So I think hopefully it, it moves across all of those and you can adapt this to suit the kind of conditions and the environment you're in. Um, and if you haven't got an external space or you haven't got a workshop then you can circumnavigate that um, with this exercise, hopefully. Um, Desmond, are you on Twitter? <laughs> um, <laughs> I am, but I, I kind of, all I do on Twitter is I put sort of sarcastic remarks about things, things that annoy me. So you're probably better off looking at my Instagram account. If you want to communicate with me, Instagram's better because I was moaning about, I moan about things on Twitter and it's not very, it's not very, in, you know, um, uh, enamoring, I don't think. So uh, don't, don't listen to me moaning. Um, so come to Instagram, I'm on there instead. Um, I'm definitely going to use the paper 3D activity as a process sculpture, yeah. Um, space is always an issue, really good point. This is one of the reasons, Tom, isn't it, that why we wanted to use, the, set this off as well, is that often I speak to educators and teachers and they often say, look, we, you know, we are really pushed for space, for time, for resources. And hopefully, you know, this, this stuff you could bring in, a, you could just bring a box into a room and unpack it and it can go back into a box. Your, your, your space you're working in, the ex exhibition space can be, the, can be the, the, your bedroom or your living room and um, the, they can exist on, 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 a, on, on your camera phone. Um, so th this is really, you know, the idea is this, you can stick it in a bag or a box, stick it under your arm and then deploy it as, a, as an activity. But for me, it's, it's the implications beyond this through across all subject areas that you could use these activities, hopefully. I, th I think that's a really good point, Des. And I, something we like to do is often with year 10 and above, um, if you're interested in them doing something 3D with us, then we can often run sort of workshops, sculpture matter related workshops on our campus as well. So if that's ever something that's of interest, do let us know and we can we can refine details together but that, that'd be really interesting yeah great um i have to go now and wake up the toddler but well look laura you got to go and do that don't uh, yeah don't don't want them oversleeping there's the magic witching hour isn't there after three o'clock you've got to get them up um okay yeah yes i'm on, yes, I'm on instagram um what else we got here well, okay. that's a great reminder from liv as well about about the neat meeting 
please do uh, pop along to that if you're interested in the recovery curriculum in particular it'll be, it'll be really useful to have your ideas and input on that wow hang on a minute Heidi this is exciting so you're going to come to Norfolk and make some sand sculptures great you know the you know the work of um where is he do you know the work of this guy Cy Twombly you know who's got yeah okay well he did it do you know the sculptures he made with, with making using sand so he did a series, this is almost as if, almost by, by magic, I've got a sight on me, but this is one of his sculptures that he, he made a series of bronze sculptures based on, he poured plaster into sand on a beach in Italy and then cut, took the sand cast out and uh, made a load of work. So get down on the beach and start casting. Yeah, brilliant. But maybe don't do it at Haysborough because I think the cliffs are eroding. So um, somewhere else. Yeah. Right. Um, and I'm thinking all that driftwood you could get and all the kind of bits of stuff that you can find on the beach to build things with. Um, would you travel? I teach in London. Okay, Tom, there's a question from Joanna Bunce. Yeah, we travel literally across the UK. Sometimes we've got to tie things in with uh, some events that we're doing uh, down your way. But yes, we'd be very interested in working with you. So um, please, um, please just drop us an email, particularly at student.recruitment at nua.ac.uk. That's student.recruitment at nua.ac.uk. And let's look to arrange something. Let's see what can happen. What we can do is we can, we can tailor it we can tailor something for your for your requirements or your curriculum but also we we have a number of sort of bespoke uh workshops we can do don't we tom so we can really we're very flexible yeah um, do you tra <laughs> you travel to devon trust we, we do travel to devon. so so we we often exhibit um UCAS wise we often go down to Exeter um, but I've been down to Petrock and places like that in, in the past and yeah we'd love we'd love to go wherever wherever that there's there's an interest and we can tie it in we'd be yeah we'd be interested in working with you yes I think we also had a question about would we be able to do these remotely and we absolutely would so if kind of the current situation continues, that doesn't mean that we can't yeah. carry on making sculpture. We can definitely look at doing something remote as well, much like today. Yeah. Um, Art Pocket, okay, yeah. Um, thanks ever so much for your comments. Really, really lovely to hear from you. Um, thanks, thanks for that. Um, yeah, look, um, it's, it's gotta be fun and it's gotta be, hopefully gotta be engaging, um, but hopefully it kind of makes you think about other ways of developing sculpture out from from the from the, the, the surface of the table um or the, the printer or whatever this is stuff this is really cheap stuff this is just you know the, the cost wise it's it's nothing but what what i i'm I, we're trying to do is to encourage people to think think big with this stuff it's the, these are these are modest modest materials and i go back to an example um uh, uh, for good or ill dyson mr dyson sir dyson of the hoover hoover dyson not hoover the Dyson Dyson, it's not a Hoover, but anyway, he, he started his, his there's, um, there's a wall, the Royal College of Arts got a wall with a number of images of Dyson's early kind of designs for his vacuum cleaner. And, and his first kind of test runs are a couple of cardboard tubes with a bit of wood and a bit of something on the bottom. They were literally little cardboard maquettes of, that helped him to think about something that then became the Dyson vacuum cleaner. So I th I think it's just a good illustration of, of, you know, something is chuck away and as cheap as a piece of paper becomes, becomes something much greater than the sum of it, the parts. And it just requires a certain amount of kind of willingness to, to have a go and experiment. But, um, you know, you, th th that's, it's all around us, you know, the stuff we've got, you know. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, who's off to, Amy Lee's going to, to go to the birds. And f right, well, look, um, I've already, this is exciting. So the, the, she's going to the garden to make bread sculpture for the birds. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a little bit of fun but at the same time it's sort of it you're actually if you think about it you're getting the birds to do some carving they're going to be carving you've done some modeling and they're going to do some carving uh which is quite exciting so you've got these two pro sculptural processes happening we've also yeah. had a question about the wire yeah, yeah. Uh, i don't know if you have any recommendations des or tom of where to buy the armature wire yeah. Um, well, actually, I was in my mum's garden last week and I just used, I bought, I, just, I nicked a piece of her, um, green, you know, the green gardening wire that you, just with a plastic coating. That's brilliant. Just that stuff. You get a roll of that in the garden centre because um, it's got memory. It just stays where it is. So it's, it's as good as this stuff. But this was, um, this is just, um, 
of coil of modeling wire. You can buy this from this, this particular stuff, I think was from, it might've been from Espo, it might be from Espo, but- um, we, we do use Espo a lot. It's, it's actually, this, this stuff is from Specialist Crafts. Specialist Crafts. Um, but yeah, Espo is another, another great one that we use. Um, other, other suppliers are available, but um, yeah, you, yeah, I mean, as long as it's got the memory, the most important thing is it's got the muscle, the kind of material memory that it doesn't spring back, it just holds its shape. Um, and another, another recommendation I'd say is if, if you have the, the wherewithal and then the, if you're able to, um, we use a material from a company called Brundles in London and, it, and it's annealed wire. Now there's a company in Warrington that do it um, and it's steel wire that's been, it's drawn steel wire but it's, it's pretty greasy. So if you ever want to use it, it's worth pre-cutting and cleaning it if you want your students to not get mucky, but they might do. But um, you can buy a, a huge quantity of it for about 45 quid. And it, I, I've, I've been using it for about two years now with my students and it hasn't run out. But um, it's, an, it's called annealed wire. And it's, it's got it's very thick, you can get very thick wire, very thin wire, but you can just move it with your hands and it stays put. And the beauty of it is you can wrap it, you can weld it, it's very soft. Um, but it's beautiful stuff. But yeah, look, garden twine is perfect. Garden wire is 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 as easy as that. A roll of that will go a long way. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, thank you, Heidi. Good. Yeah, specialist crafts. Yeah, that's all right. That's good. Uh, the, yeah, Brundles. B R M B B R U N D A L. Brundles, I think. And it's in it's in East London. But it's amazing stuff. It's it's um. It's marvelous. You can get different thicknesses. It's fantastic stuff. And the beauty of that stuff is, if you buy the thicker gauge, you can build massive, great structures. And they just stay up, and you can cut it with a snippers, and it's very cheap. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah. Good. Great. Well, I, I think we're we're coming to half past. So, if anyone's got any final questions, and then we'll we'll leave it there for today. Thanks, Ellie, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Thanks for taking part. The one. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, this is very interesting from Lorna. Yeah, very, real pleasure, Lorna. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, this wire piece could be so you could sort of activate it on a wall. It doesn't have to be on the table. It could be situated on a wall. You could leave it. It could become a kind of three-dimensional sort of sculpture that sits there over time, over a long period of time. Right, well, slowly but surely. You're, thank you, Rosemary and your assistant, Freya. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Genevieve. Good to see you. And adult learning, thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> Christina, thank you for your, your assistance. has been very helpful as well. <laughs> uh, Sveti, you're outside as well. You've been working outside or in a conservatory, so you've had lots of light. Good to see. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Actually, it'd be quite cool to put the bread sculpture on top of the roof and watch it being kind of, watch its fate from below. <laughs> and thanks, Ruth and Joanna. Thank you. Cheers, everyone. Great. Definitely. Oh, Ruth, come on. That's very kind of you. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, keep in touch, everybody. Send us your stuff. Send us all your material, all right? Okay. Thanks very much, Des. Thank you, everybody, for taking part. Thank you.